let us summarize what we've learned so far about quadratic functions and the graphs. The vertex of a quadratic function can be found by the formula h equals negative b over 2a. And then the associated y-coordinate k can be found just by looking at f of h right there. And we can use this to find the quadratic or the vertex each and every time. If we want to find the x-intercepts of a quadratic function, you know, it looks like f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, we can maybe, we have to solve the quadratic equation, f of x equals zero, which we can solve that by factoring and completing the square. But you can also use the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And using the discriminant inside of the quadratic formula right there, we can determine whether the graph's going to have two, one, or zero x-intercepts. And the last thing I want to mention is we can also talk about the concavity of the graph here. When your leading coefficient is a positive number, this means the graph will concave upward and the vertex will represent a minimum on the graph. When your leading coefficient is negative, this will actually tell your graph is concave downward and thus the vertex will be a maximum on the graph. Putting these three bits of information together can nearly always give you a pretty accurate picture of a quadratic graph, that is a parabola. So imagine we have the function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. If I was to graph this thing, there's a couple things I could do. I'd first look for some x-intercepts, right? We can find that from the quadratic formula. We could try to factor, although this one doesn't factor very nicely at all. By the quadratic formula, we get negative b, which is going to be a negative 6 right here. I mean, after all, our, our values are a equals negative 3, b equals 6, and c equals 1. So we're going to get a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, which will be a 36. Then you're going to get negative a, neg negative 4 times a times c. a times c is just negative 3 times by negative 4 gives you a positive 12. 3 plus 12 is a 48. Now, 48 itself is not a perfect square, but it does have 16 as a divisor. 48 is 16 times 3. The square root of 16 is then 4. So you get negative 6 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 3 over negative 6. If you factor out a negative 2 from the numerator, that would leave behind a 3 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3 all over negative 6. And then negative 2 goes into negative 6 three times, thus giving us what we have right here. And as we want to graph these, these are our x-intercepts, we're going to need to approximate these things. And so if you look at the two choices, uh, minusing the 2 root 3 will give us negative 0.15 if we round to two decimal places. And if we take 3 plus 2 root 3 over 3, that'll give you 2.15. So this gives us two points on the graph, two x-intercepts. We get 2.15 comma 0. And then the other one over here is negative 0 0.150. The y-coordinate of an x-intercept is always 0 by construction. Uh, then if we could find the vertex, we could graph this thing pretty well, as you can see on the screen right here. Now the vertex, remember, we just find that to be h is negative b over 2a, which in this situation we get negative 6 over negative 6, which is equal to 1. And then once we have 1, we can plug that into the formula, k equals negative 3 plus 6 plus 1. And we see that the vertex is going to be 1 comma 4. 1 comma 4, that's given right here. Notice that this function will always have as its axis of symmetry the vertical line that goes through the vertex. So this gives you the line x equals 1. And then using these three points, the x-intercepts and the vertex, you could probably piece together a pretty good looking parabola. You don't do your best to make that bowl shape. If you're drawing by hand, you won't be scrutinized too much probably, but we get something like you see drawn by the computer right here. So with the vertex and the x-intercepts, we can graph any parabola for the most part. So there, there are a few exceptions, right? This, what we saw previously is if we have a parabola which has two distinct real x-intercepts. What if we don't? Like if you take f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 9, in that situation right here, this actually is a perfect square trinomial. It factors as f of x equals x minus 3 squared. And so the x-intercept, there's only one of them, actually coincides with the vertex. So you see the vertex is 3 comma 0 in this situation. You need another, you need another, you need another point to determine what's going on here. Now, we could use the leading coefficient to help us out a little bit, right? A equals 1, which is positive. This tells us the graph concaves up. So the picture has to be something above the x-axis. That's, that is useful. Uh, the next thing also to mention is that since you have A equals 1, we can then go up 1, 1 y-coordinate, over 1, 
x coordinate to find another point, which is going to be 4, 1. And then using symmetry, because the function is symmetric with respect to the line x equals 3, we can find another point uh, using reflection here, uh, say at 2, 1. And then using those three points, we can connect and make our parabola right like so. Now, you don't have to use necessarily the next point over. You could use any point in the domain, right? You could just be like, oh, what's, what is f of, you know, 5? You know, you could do something like that. And you can compute that. That give you a point over here, and then you reflect to get you another point over here. It doesn't matter. You just have to make sure you pick a different point other than the vertex, uh, and then you can, you can work from there. It, it doesn't matter as long as we find these points. You're going to be good to go in that regard. Now, I also, then that, that's if your vertex is on the x-axis. What if your vertex is even on the x-axis? What if it's, you know, what if there's no real solutions, uh, no real x-intercepts, and so your graph might look something like this? Well, in that situation, I'd still tell you to find the vertex, right, h comma k, and then pick another point, like maybe use the slope or just plug and chug to find some other point over here, uh, h plus 1 comma k plus whatever the a value is, something like that. I think that would be a good thing to do. And then use symmetry to find the other side. We can use this to graph any quadratic function.